Hi, my name is Brittany Sosi, and I attended the National Conference on Media Reform 2013 in Denver, Colorado. Going to the National Conference on Media Reform in Denver, Colorado, Roberta had told us just to be aware that, you know, even though everybody there is going to be like talking about, you know, social justice and um, media reform, that they're going to really probably, we need to set the example because we believe that young people can talk about these social issues and can have their views and share their views. I was excited getting on the plane and I was like, oh, okay, well, we're going to be the examples and I was like prepared. I was like, all right, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to go change the world. <laughs> I got there and I looked for like Native Americans because I, I realized that I have all these role models, but I wanted somebody that I could identify with. I'm co-founder of a global movement called Idle No More. It's a uh, protection of indigenous sovereignty, um, as well as protection of land and water. Primarily my job is to work with radio stations, native radio stations across the country. And right now, primarily I'm working with stations that are <clears throat> having difficulty with compliance issues. Native Public Media is a nonprofit organization dedicated to empowering Native Americans to use media uh, on all platforms and on their own terms. I mean, I look up to a lot of people, but when you, you, when you have the connection with somebody because you have the same ethnicity, because you've gone through the same experiences, like your people as well. We're called harebrained. Um, jokesters drumming on drums and so that's the kind of um, portrayal that's out there in terms of the big multinational uh, media. The Indians were always villainized or they came across as uh, the stereotypes that they were either drunks or teepee Indians or they were um, subhuman, they were not intellectually smart and so all these things play a role because media symbolizes what culture believes in. Laura Sand Taylor told me that she could relate to what I was wanting to do and me being a young Native American woman who has these views at such a young age, but that I'm, she's glad that I'm one of the few that has taken the initiative to go out and find ways to, to express myself. When I was about 10 years old, I remember very distinctly um, being punished for speaking Hopi and that left an indelible mark on who I became. And basically, um, the message to me as a child was that my language was not valued, who I was was not valued, to the point that if you were to lay a hand on a child and give them that message, you're really telling them that you don't value that human life. There are so many self-destructive things that you hear about Native Americans, and it's, it's sad because I'm not like that, and I don't want, to, I don't want my, my cousins or my little nieces and nephews to be seen like that just because of how tainted a lot of the views used to be of Native Americans that has really left a negative mark on my nationality. Just to hear her say that she can relate to how I feel about these things, I felt, now I feel that the drive to, to achieve in journalism. 
I think youth in media is extremely important. Um, you have to have the masses of youth to change the future. Because in Native America, for example, I don't expect every Native American youth to cover Native stories. But, but what I would like to see is that if I had 100 Native youth trained, in, trained to do media, then I know that my chances of hearing stories from Indian country are much higher. It's really important that we keep the children involved in today's world because I always advocate to you know, people I work with that the children of today know so much more than what we knew as children and it's encouraging. Everything that I don't know more um, does involves youth. The voice of the future generations is critical in everything that we do because um, I, I can't always be here to be that voice. It's kind of like passing the torch type of thing. And I find with, with youth, their voice is creative. It's very dynamic, it's energetic. I was really pleased with all their, you know, their views and it really made me think too. It's like, I would have never thought of saying something like that or seeing something in that way, but it makes sense. And just listening to all these people talking, even like in the other sessions, it was just, it was really like inspiring me to, I want to, you know, be one of those adults who can, and hopefully like change the way a youth thinks about these things. With National Conference on Media Reform being over, it's not just something that just went one ear and out the other. It's something that stayed there and really has been pushing me to, you know, do better in school, to communicate myself, to prove I am not a statistic.